Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Wallace and I'm the owner and creator of A Life Refurbished. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how by using a couple very simple painting techniques, you can take your furniture makeover to another level. So stay tuned if you want to see more. Today, we're going to be refinishing this beautiful Victorian style cabinet. I tried to look up and see if I could find a piece that resembled this cabinet and I couldn't find anything quite like it. But if I had to take a guess, I would say that this piece goes back to the mid 1940s, 1950s. It has some pretty unique features like the open shelving, middle drawers, bottom drawers and a drop down drawer like a secretary desk. We're going to start by washing everything with soapy water. Remember that I do this to get rid of all the grease and grime before I even start sanding. Right now, I don't know exactly what my vision is for this cabinet, but I can already tell that the wood on this piece is super red, which tells me that it's gonna bleed. In case you don't know, bleed through is some wood tannings that filter through your new finish unless you seal this wood really really well after you sand it which i'm gonna be most certainly doing but first i'm sanding everything with my surf prep sanding system this thing seriously is a dream come true when it comes to sanding and prepping antiques you can tell that that foamy bendable abrasive contours to the shape of whatever sanding which makes sanding those carved details, curved edges, extremely easy. Since I have a really bad right shoulder and I refinish furniture on a full-time basis, this has really been a game changer. No, I'm not a sponsor, but I do love this sanding system. I use a medium grid for the surf prep and for my DeWalt, I am using a 120 grid. Once everything is sanded, I start removing the rest of the hardware. This is just a personal preference of mine. I like to vacuum as much dust as possible before I actually use a rag to clean the rest. That way I won't have to change the water that I use to clean is as often because it doesn't get as dirty. Once everything is clean, I'm gonna start making the repairs. I'm gonna be using a clamp, a wood glue, some wood filler, a syringe, wet rag, and steering stick. I started by filling in this area where a big chunk of wood veneer was missing. And then at some point, this cabinet had some wooden candles that were taken off, and there were a couple small gouges there that needed to be filled. Some of the wood veneer is also getting glued and I have said this before, if you do have a syringe to inject the glue, it's so helpful. I'm gonna be securing all of this by clamping it and this is where my steering stick comes in handy. Once you clamp things, wood glue is gonna start coming off. Just wipe it with a wet rag. I always had one by my side every time I'm gonna be gluing something. It's time to sand all my repairs and for this one, once I started sanding, there were some imperfections that were still noticeable, so I just did a second round of wood filler and kept sanding the rest of my repairs. As you can tell, the front bottom of my piece got sanded all the way through because it had some deep scratches and I kind of like how it looked bare so i decided just to tape it and not paint it now that all the repairs are done i can start priming my cabinet with this clear shellac to be on the safe side and avoid those wood tannings coming through my new finish i apply two coats as always i recommend that you follow the instructions given on this product 
and every product that you use i am wearing a respirator to make sure that i don't inhale any of the chemicals After you spray your clear shellac, you will notice that your piece is going to be super shiny. We have to get rid of that sheen by scuff sanding once again. I know that this might feel like an extra step or too much or double work, but believe me, you don't want to skip this step if you want to have a long lasting finish. Now it's time to clean that dust I just created with a land free wet rag. As I'm wiping my piece, I'm thinking, I don't know that two coats of clear shellac were enough to prime it. I better play it safe and apply a light coat of the white bin shellac primer. And if there are any areas that are troublesome, those areas will turn either pinkish or brownish to the touch of the white primer. And to my surprise, there were several areas where I have to go and reapply this white primer. I got all that bleed through under control and I can finally move on and start painting. I will be using one of these beautiful new colors from Fusion. It is called Hazelwood and it's a beautiful gray. As you could tell, I diluted my paint with a little bit of water. I don't have a ratio for you because each spray gun is different and also the ratio for each paint is different. So you just kind of have to play around if you want to be spraying it. Oftentimes when you are spraying pieces with details such as the ones on this cabinet, you're going to find yourself going back, touching up those areas that you couldn't get paint on by spraying it, just like I do using a brush here. Right about now, I'm thinking that my cabinet just needs a little something. And being that the drawers on the front that were left bare were too red and didn't know how it was going to look with the gray, I decided to tone those red colors down by applying a color wash of Algonquin. This is also a color from Fusion Mineral Paint. To do a color wash, you just need to dilute some of that paint with water and I'm adding the ratios for you here. I let it sit for a minute or two and then I start wiping it off with my wet rag. You can repeat this step until you achieve the desired color. I like how it looked, so to tie my piece together, I decided to do the same color wash on the bottom of the cabinet. Right now I'm thinking that my cabinet still needs something and I wanted to highlight the details so I proceeded to apply the color wash on those areas where the details were. I figured that these would tie my piece together as well. It might be hard to see but on this bottom drawer on the left side you can still see where that old handle used to be even though I made the repairs to these guys that I also applied this color wash on all the front drawers. This technique is applied the same way on paint than it is on bare wood. So after you apply your color wash, you wipe it off with a wet rag. And you just wipe it as much as you can until you achieve the desired look. I like to keep some water handy just in case things don't wipe like I like them too. I just keep getting my rag wet or you can even spray it on your drawer. This will activate the paint once again and it'll make it workable. This is how it's looking after that color wash over paint. And just to add a little bit more of dimension to this, I grab my bristle brush, dip it into a little bit of paint, offloaded the excess and started feathering the paint back and forward. This technique is also known as a dry brush technique. I use it all the time. I love what it adds to the piece. Notice that I'm barely touching the drawer with the paintbrush. You can go as heavy, as light as you want. This is when things get really, really fun because you get to be you and express yourself through finishing. 
And to continue to highlight all of the details on the rest of this piece, I decided to do the same thing. I used the dry brush technique and just feather some of that paint on each detail. Something that I recommend as you are trying the dry brush technique is to start with less paint. Otherwise, if you put too much to the point that you don't like it, you're going to find yourself having to reapply your base color, waiting for that to dry, and basically start over. So this way you will create less work for yourself by starting with less and keep adding more as you are liking how things are looking. If you feel like you have made a mistake and you went a little too heavy in some parts, just feel free to use your wet rag to help you erase those areas and then you can start feathering again over it. I decided to highlight the edges as well with this technique. And I'm starting to really love how these cabinets turning out. One thing that I like to do to make sure that my piece is looking even is to take two steps back and if I see like I need to add a little bit more of the technique anywhere, I just go ahead and do that or if I feel like I have to correct anything, this is a good time to do it. To protect my piece, I'm going to be using High Performance Flat Top Coat from General Finishes and I'm going to be applying three coats to make sure that this cabinet withstands the test of time. And here it is. I do love that grade against that natural wood and I think those brass knobs complement it beautifully. Since I like to keep things transparent with you, I have to tell you that after I applied the gray color, I was not loving it. And I am so glad I went for the color wash and the dry brush technique because I feel like it took this piece to another level and now I'm completely in love with it. I hope that you guys enjoy this makeover and as always I want to remind you that it doesn't matter how bad things get just like there's hope for these beautiful pieces of furniture there's always hope for you please make sure to subscribe make sure that the notifications bell button is on so that you don't miss out on what I do next until next time